Oh my god! Oh, these guys are so freaking cute! Look at them! They're so cute! <laughs> How's it going, everyone? And yes, please pardon my uh, d very disheveled appearance today. Um, I basically just woke up and I just watched the Pokemon Presents. Now, I couldn't be bothered to wake up at 9 a.m., so it's like. 2 p.m. now, uh, but I did, I managed to, thanks to the help of my lovely girlfriend, I uh, managed to avoid the spoilers and just watch, you know, as if, every, you know, I'd watched it live, so I didn't know what, what, was, uh, what was all being announced with it. And yeah, so the main thing we're here to talk about are these two new games, Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Uh, there was other stuff in the Pokemon Presents, like, it was only about 15 minutes long, so it's not a lot of stuff if you want to go ahead and watch it through yourself, but most of it is just, like, mobile game stuff not not a lot that i personally cared about and like it was the like most like transparent uh pokemon presents that i think i've ever seen personally just because it was so like was so so much nothing throughout the entire presentation that i'm like okay you guys are just you're waiting to reveal the new pokemon just reveal the new pokemon games already please please i can tell just do it just do it and they did, and I want to talk about that. So yeah, if you want to remain spoiler free, uh, please go ahead and just, I guess, not watch this video because I'm going to be talking about everything that was in this trailer, and if you don't want to be spoiled and all of that, I apologize that you even found this video in the first place, <laughs> but I guess I'll see you around. <laughs> so they try and fake you out at first because uh, the, the trailer starts out with a police officer roaming through what we find out is uh, Game Freak's offices. Uh, and he enters this room that's full of like old like vintage it looks like woodworking stuff or just a lot of documents art you know tons of like that kind of stuff um, and then we finally you know transition into the actual like game footage after that but um, a lot of people I'm sure are gonna stop and analyze like all the stuff in the room or like what this like intro sequence means but like and, you know, I'm I'm not MatPat, I'm not Game Theory, we don't, we don't care about that stuff here. So getting into the meat of it, um, there's a window that you go through, and we finally get a look at this brand new Pokemon world, which by the way, I don't think they've revealed the name of yet, so I don't have a name for this region, so I'm just gonna call it New Pokemon World, if that's okay. But we get a look at New Pokemon World, and it starts with a bird's eye view of the region in several different places at several different times. And one thing that's very, very quickly noticeable is that it's all open. Like, it looks like you can just kind of like travel around like, yeah, there are definitely going to be bottlenecks. And we'll, we'll talk about that for a bit, uh, you know, in a bit. Um, but I mean, as far as your traversal around, it looks like it's totally up to you where you want to go, which is really cool. Um, the downside is that it still looks like a PS2 game. The graphics, they still haven't figured out how to do better than that, which is kind of frustrating, but you know what? Um, well, they, they, they gave us, the, I think, the more important part, which is the open-worldness, which is kind of cool. And it starts panning around to all these locations, and you just take a look at all these different Pokemon. But we start looking at all these different places, and I can't help but notice that, aside from the graphics not being phenomenal, the frame rate is just god-awful on anything with an animation. Like, the Pokemon walking around, there's a windmill that's spinning, like, literally, like, even the camera moving around through the, you know, around these objects, like, the frame rate just drops, it, like, just tanks as soon as there's any kind of movement or motion at all. Like, it's just so clear that two things need to happen. Uh, one is that Pokemon needs to slow down development uh, and figure out how to optimize their games. Um, and we'll talk about that. I have a long, really long video I'm working on that's coming out in probably two months or so. I wish we'll discuss more of that, so I'll, I'll wait to you see that to discuss that. Uh, but two, also, come on, Nintendo, you need a more powerful Switch at this point. It's been five years. Let's get a more powerful Switch so these guys don't have to deal with garbage frame rates, okay? Come on. Come on. But yes, aside from all of these frame rate and graphical issues, uh, and aside from, you know, these areas being open, there is one more thing that I would like to draw all of your attention to in these clips, which is that these Pokemon are fully animated. Like, they've got full walking animations, they've got behavioral animations, they've got it all. Like, it's just there now, which is, yes, the bare minimum. I will, uh, you know, I'm not going to pretend like it's something that, you know, we need to be losing our minds over. They finally did it here, and that is, regardless of, you know, how 
important that is in our minds, that, that is improvement. I would rather see improvement than see no improvement. So I am very, very happy to see Pokemon fully immersed and, you know, fully integrated into the world here finally. They don't look out of place. There's no Wingles just like gliding around like this anymore, which I think is, you know, that's, that is praiseworthy. Good job, Game Freak. Good job. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad to see that improvement is there. That is awesome. It is good to see that they're actually putting forth the effort to do that. Once we get to see all those little things, um, the camera starts flying through a couple of the locations that I think they have mostly finished uh, as of right now. And again, graphics, kind of disappointing. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have to accept that these games just don't look good. They don't, and that's very unfortunate. <laughs> But to take the focus off of that for a moment, um, the locations that they do show, uh, I think are a Finnish city that they have there, and they also show like a little villa or village or something uh, that I'm assuming is your hometown since your character walks up to it and goes into, you know, presumably your own house. Um, and we can start, I guess, talking about like the region for this game as far as what we got to see in this trailer, uh, and at least what area of the world I think it's based off of. And I believe I've personally narrowed it down to three countries, uh, Italy, Greece or Spain and I have no fucking clue which one I think the least likely of the three is probably Greece only because of the names of the three starters which we'll get into ah you know what fuck it let's start talking about shit out of order uh these are the three starters of this game I mean there's not really much you know besides you know talk about in the trailer anyway so yeah pretty much after you go into your house uh, you get to see the cop in the in, in the room again, and then it's like, oh my god, the starters! Oh, holy shit, they're beautiful! They're so cute! Oh my god! Yeah, these are the starters uh, for the new games. Um, you got um, Catatigo, I think. F -f -f Fuegator. And Quaxel. There's no way that I got any of those right, but they're, they're pretty close, <laughs> I think. But yeah, you can see their actual names right there instead of my stupid brain remembering them after seeing them maybe twice um but the reason that i don't think it's greece is because uh, if you look at like the the cat's name and the the fire gator's name like those, those doesn't sound like greek uh, it sounds more like either italian or spanish um and if you look at this map uh that was shown right before we go back into the room to see the starters you can see like the outline of like a coastline which doesn't really look like an italy's coastline um so it could be spain given the fue it's like the the start of the gator's name, but like the the the, the ending of the cat's name, and also this one little bit where I saw like it's a shield with like a grapevine or an olive vine drawn on it. That could be Italy. So so I I personally think it's either Italy or Spain. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll find out later. Uh, I could be totally one hundred percent wrong on that too, but um, that's what it seems like. The v villages seem like they would fit in either location. The dress up or the, 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 the garments that the characters are in look like they could be in either location. Now I am not knowledgeable enough about either place to know what differences you know there are between these two places that could uh, you know identify them. Um, so I'm not smart enough to tell you which one of these two places it is or if it's somewhere else in the world but those are my main two guesses and I think that that's fun. That is the one bit of like game theory-esque things that I will talk about in this video. I think this region is based off of either Italy or Spain and we're gonna find out which one. I hope it's Italy because I'm Italian and I would love to see that but uh, you know I'll be happy with either. I think both will be cool. And yeah, just to talk about the actual starters here real quick for a second. Um, these things, these little guys, these cuties are just, uh, they're my personal favorite starters I've seen in a long time from Pokemon, just straight up. I don't remember the last time I reacted this positively to the starters. Um, X and Y, I think, had the last couple of starters I thought were, like, really solid. Um, and that's weird because those games I don't think are great otherwise. Because <laughs> I like Diamond and Pearl, obviously I liked Emeralds. Um, wasn't a huge fan of the starters from Black or White. Um, like I said, X and Y's I think were pretty solid. Um, after that, what was, was it Sun and Moon after that? I liked Rowlet. I didn't like any of the other ones from there. So even with Sword and Shield, like, uh, I chose Sobble because again, Sobble I think was the only one out of there that I really like super enjoyed. I don't eat, oh, was it? No, I don't even remember what the grass one was. Cause there was Sobble, there was the, oh, it was, was it Grookey? But these ones right here, like, I just immediately was like, yeah, I'll choose any of these guys. I don't care. They're all amazing. I would I would replay this game three times just so I have a chance to start with all three of these guys. And that I'm very happy to say that because, like I said, I, I would not have said that for 
uh, any of the previous games that have come out recently. So I'm very happy about that. And I don't know, I guess leave me a comment down below saying which starter you would start with when you're going to get these games, which by the way, they revealed the names of after this called Scarlet and Violet, um, which <laughs> I don't know, that's kind of harkening back to the originals. Um, I don't know if they wanted to do that just because it was announced on the 26th anniversary of Pokemon, but I mean, it's just, it's the 26th anniversary. You would think that they would maybe do that on the 25th or the, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they couldn't get them released for last year and they wanted to, but either way, I think it's cool that they're kind of like going back to like the original like red and blue style of naming. Um, but Scarlet is just kind of like red. Granted, they've never made a purple Pokemon game, so Violet is brand new, but Scarlet seems like they were reaching a little bit. Um, but I mean, the names are probably the least important things uh, about the Pokemon games. So I'm gonna give them a hat. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and give them a pass on these. Uh, they're fine. <laughs> So yeah, which, uh, which Pokemon are you going to start out with in uh, either Scarlet or Violet? And I guess which one are you thinking about getting right now? Because I know usually I, I look at the legendary for each of the games and decide which one I want to catch based on that or which game I want to get based on which one I want to catch. So I'm probably going to wait to see what uh, le the legendaries for this game look like and then make my decision there. But um, you can tell me if you have a preference right now, if you just like one of the colors better than the other. And just so you know what my starter preference would be, I think, I think I want to start with the cat but that is only because i am i own two cats <laughs> and i'm a little biased there but i also like the the fire gator is really cute he's so cute <laughs> it would definitely be between those two for the first uh first time for me i think the the duck one quaxel or whatever his name is i think he'd be my last one that i run through with but again love all of them very happy with all of these designs i'm very excited to see what the other pokemon in this region look like and i mean after showing the title and, and telling you all that uh the trailer just kind of ends saying you know coming out late 2022 we'll have a release date later i'm assuming it's going to be late october early november kind of like it usually is uh probably no big surprises there um, but it does also give you uh, a link to go to, you know, I think it's pokemon.com slash scarlet violet, uh, for more information. So I went there and it just kind of like consolidated everything that was in the trailer uh, into a web page. But one thing that it does actually confirm that the trailer never specifically says outright is that this game is completely open world. And that's really cool. So like, like I said before, like it showed you like a bird's eye view of everywhere and it, it looked open. But here is an explicit statement on Nintendo's website saying that it's completely open world. Um, I, how much do I believe that personally? Um, I think it's going to be Pokemon's or Nintendo's version of an open world. I guess more so Pokemon because Nintendo, they've made Breath of the Wild, which is actually an open world. But uh, it says that the, the you know, the you can flow the, freely from town to town, um, which is kind of cool. But I... I can't help but shake this like weird feeling that uh, by open world they just mean there's a, a new wild area in between each town and you're still just going in a linear fashion through them and not like an interconnected web of like oh you can go wherever you want whenever you want. I think that would be too complicated for them to have designed in the amount of time that they had especially knowing that they were working on Legends Arceus at the same time that they were making this. I just don't believe that it's going to be that full-fledged open world experience that we want. I think it's going to end up being kind of disappointing for the people who are expecting a Breath of the Wild or even probably a Legends Arceus style uh, kind of game where you can just kind of go wherever. I don't I don't think it's going to be that way. I think it's going to be more similar to like a wild area between all the points you need to go. So uh, my advice to all of you would be go in with that expectation. That way, in case it succeeded, you end up being happier with what you get versus expecting a full open world and then being possibly disappointed. So, um, you know, that would be my advice to you. You can take it or you cannot. That is totally up to you. Um, but I don't know how to end this sentence, so I'm just going to do this. Um, and uh, I guess that's all I really had to say about the trailer. Um, as far as my continued coverage of these games will go, uh, like I said, I am going to be releasing a two-hour long video just in general about Game Freak and Pokemon and everything. That'll be released in about two months when it's all finished. Um, uh, so I'll be definitely talking at least my my thoughts generally about Pokemon. I'll, I'll try and include this uh, in here now that I know, uh, you know, that it's come out because I had no idea when I was ready. I'm still writing the script, which is lucky. I haven't filmed anything yet, so I can still work it in there. Like I said, I am going to probably wait and see what the legendaries of these games look like. So I'll be looking out for, uh, for that announcement. But... Because I'm actually interested in this game, and like I, I, I think I'm gonna end up getting these. I don't want to learn too much more about them. I'm gonna try and keep myself as spoiler-free as possible. So, 
Uh, don't expect another one of these, you know, quickie style videos on this topic, uh, just because I'm going to try to keep myself unknowledgeable to the fact of whatever's being released online. I don't want to know anything really about the story. I don't want to know the characters. I don't want to, I don't want to see any Pokemon besides uh, the legendaries before I pick the games up um, later this year. I want to go in completely blind, which does mean I'll probably lose out on uh, some views from videos like this when new uh, news drops about the games, but um, just so you under you're aware, I don't know if anybody's using me as a news source for Pokemon or Nintendo updates, but just in case you are, uh, please feel free to go elsewhere for that, at least for this game. Uh, my recommendation would be Arlo. I'm sure he's also got a video up today uh, about this as well. I'd be highly surprised to find out that he didn't upload anything, and I did. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and head over to Arlo's channel and subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. He is very good at covering Nintendo stuff. <laughs> And that's about it for this video. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed running through this trailer again with me. And anybody who missed that announcement, I I'm, I'm hope you're as hopeful about these games as, as I am, or as cautiously optimistic as I am, as I think was what I would put it. I'm cautiously optimistic that these games will be good, despite all the many, many flaws that it seems that they're going to have. Um, but yeah, that's been about it. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video, and thank you so much for watching, all right? Stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Again, I don't know how to end this, so I'm just going to do this. Bye. <laughs> uh, there's probably links up there you can click now.